como las hojas al viento, como el sol espanta al frío, como la tierra la lluvia, como el mar espera el río, así espero tu regreso a la tierra del olvido. Como naufraga mi miedo, si navego en tu mirada, como alerta mi sentido, con tu voz enamorada, con tu sonrisa de niña, como me mueves el alma, como me quitas el sueño, como me robas la calma. Good morning, this is Mike once again in Impacto Latino. As you guys saw uh, on, on the announcement, we, we switch it from time to time and from Impacto Cristiano on Impacto Latino, depending what we're going to be talking about. So we want to always uh, try to get you uh, guessing. And yes, and talking about getting you guessing, uh, we might be switching from English to Spanish or oh, make it uh, 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 bilingual today because we do have. Um, a very, very, very important topic uh, to talk about. And we'll be talking about the immigration reforms, and, and I have uh, practically an expert on that area um, that's going to be touching on those uh, uh, issues because I think it's very important for our community um, to be aware or to be informed about these issues. And not only our community, but you know, everybody that is. Uh, in, involved in the United States because this is something that is uh, impacting every one of us. So today we are going to be uh, talking about the immigration. But before that, uh, let, me, let me switch uh, very, very, very quickly. You know, <laughs> that's, a, that's one of our uh, Maria, our candidate. Uh, well, she's not longer, longer a candidate. She, she, she is an elected officer already that just passed through our camera, just to apologize for that. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, so let me switch and, and, and let our Spanish viewer uh, know exactly what we're going to be talking about. But I don't want you to go away because it, this is going to be a bilingual. We're going to be coming back and forth in English and Spanish. Muy buenos días a todos nuestros eh, audiencia que están escuchando, están viendo este programa. Eh, les invitamos, les damos la bienvenida a nuestro programa de Impacto Latino. Como ustedes ven, de vez en cuando cambiamos de Impacto Cristiano, dependiendo si estamos eh, hablando acerca de, de, de tópicos que tienen que ver con la religión, con la creencia, pues Impacto Cristiano. Hoy es Impacto Latino porque vamos a estar hablando acerca de la reforma migratoria. Y estoy hablando con dos personas que eh, son muy sabientes, eh, eh, conocedores de, de este de este eh, tema y creo que va a ser de mucho interés no tan solamente a ustedes pero para todos aquellos que vivimos en esta nación en este país porque yo creo que nos in, impacta a todos antes de eso yo quiero eh, eh, darle una invitación al público eh, latino y al público cristiano en general eh, para el próximo domingo eh, los invito a la direct, a la iglesia fuente de agua viva allí el, el, el asistente del gobernador estará presente estará la candidata la, yo le sigo diciendo candidata pero ya, ya es, es por las costumbres que estuvo aquí eh, nuestra eh, concejal a lo largo de, le, de la ciudad María Cabrera estará también estará la, la, la activista comunal Nancy López estará el ex, al, el ex el candidato a la alcaldía Kevin Kelly, entre otras personas eh, y esto de lo que queremos es unificar tratar de, de in, integrar a la comunidad en una, la comunidad de fe con la comunidad secular la comunidad representativa en este caso los políticos o los gobernantes en uno y yo espero bueno, 
lo invito a ustedes para que estén allí en aquella en esa ocasión y se van a, se van a gozar eh, estamos teniendo eh, algunas dificultades en nuestra comunidad y yo creo que es importante de que nosotros pues podamos forjar eh, un frente unido eh, vamos a, a olvidarnos de, de las cosas que, que nos separan o que son diferentes y vamos entonces a tratar de identificar en qué nosotros podemos, nos identificamos, eh, 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 podemos trabajar juntos y basado en eso nosotros podemos unificarnos y trabajar eh, muchas veces y, y, y vamos a ver el resultado porque es aún bíblico, fíjate, eh, eh, ese aspecto. So, vamos a identificar lo positivo y olvídese de lo negativo, lo negativo se puede bregar con, con, con sí mismo pero busque algo positivo en, 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 en su amigo, en su hermano, en, en, su, en su comunidad. Um, I just wanted to welcome uh, Maria Cabrera, a city council at large, and also Nancy Lopez, she's a community advocate and outreach person, and we will be talking about the immigration reform, but first of all, I would like to uh, welcome, since Nancy was here, early and she's sitting next to me so I wanted to welcome uh, Nancy first. Nancy, welcome to our program. Thank you, Michael. Gracias. Uh, I do, I, you mentioned that, we're, uh, that I'm an expert in immigration or, or practically an, an expert and I'm not. I am an expert at helping the community, at listening to what they have to say, particularly people who are not citizens. Mm -hmm. I like to talk to them directly. So I, that's what I'm an expert at. I do talk with uh, people who are experts in immigration mm -hmm. and I follow up with what's going on as far as legislation. But thank you for having me here today. Well, when we talk about experts, it's having experience in that area. So in that sense, uh, we are all experts in, 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 in that sense of the word. But um, you have mentioned, what acabo de mencionar, uh, your involvement in the community. Acabo de mencionar tu envolvimiento en la comunidad. Especificamente, uh, a los latinos, ¿Qué, qué, ¿cuál es tu posición? ¿Qué haces? Well, um, I like to talk, I like to listen mm -hmm. to what the community has to say, especially those that don't know how to voice their opinions or, or, they, or they don't know what, how the process works in, in the state and in this country. Yo, a, a mí me gusta um, escuchar mm -hmm. los, los, las preocupaciones de la comunidad, especialmente los que no son, de, que no son ciudadanos, porque sí. a veces le uh, tienen miedo mm -hmm. a, a, a opinar o tienen miedo a, a participar en el sistema del gobernador, um, tú sabes, de, de, sí. de esta ciudad o de este país. So, what, with what I know, I like to hear their concerns, their their issues, and I like to take it back to okay. the powers that be and let them know, look, this is what's going on. I don't mention names, mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. um, but you know, this is what's going on in the community. Uh, I also like to educate because not only is there a responsibility to, uh, from the powers that be, but there's also responsibility to you, the immigrant, mm. you're, uh, the undocumented. You have a responsibility to educate yourself about where you live, how things work, what are your rights? And that's what I like to do, is l let them know what their rights are, human rights, civil rights, because you're here, whether it's whether you're illegal, you got here legally, however, mm -hmm. whatever happened, or your, 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 your citizenship expired because of the lack of responsibility of the immigration system, um, you know, you have, you have rights as a human being. And so that's what I like to share with people and, 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 and so that they can feel empowered so when they become citizens or, um, you know, they're trying to help someone to become citizens, they know what to do with the information. Awesome, awesome. Well, we want to we wanna include um, our city council women in this conversation because uh, she is uh, uh, full of information when it comes to, to the immigration. So Maria, I wanted to welcome you now as officially a, a, a city council a women at large to our first uh, Latino uh, program. Uh, so welcome to Impacto Latino. Thank you, thank you so much. Muchas gracias por invitarme. Y me alegro de poder estar aquí con ustedes. Thank you for the invitation. And um, as Nancy said, um, it's not that we're experts right. in the field, but 
as people who work in the community, that work with so many people in the mm -hmm. community, yes, we have to stay on top of things because I get calls all the time. I recently got a call about someone who says, I want to file my income tax, but I don't have a social security number, so how do I do this? Hace poco me acaba de recibir, acabo de recibir una llamada a una persona preguntándome que cómo podía llenar sus um, impuestos, sus impuestos mm -hmm. y le dijeron que necesitaba un número de seguro social, pero él no tiene eso, tiene el número, este, el yeah. ITIN, mm -hmm. y este, él tiene un negocio, trabaja en landscaping, y ha estado aquí muchos años, es de Ecuador, y entonces pues es una persona que está tratando de pagar sus impuestos, mm -hmm. es el parte del proceso, y me hizo esa llamada, yo no sabía, pues en ese tiempo hablamos con un abogado, que estuvimos en, el, en la emisora WDEL mm -hmm. con el señor John Watson, entonces esa pregunta pues se refirió al abogado. Pero sí, hay cosas muy simples que la gente tiene que entender, como Nancy acaba de decir. Tienen derechos civiles, tienen derechos humanos, porque mm. son humanos, no importa de qué estatus tienen aquí en, en los Estados Unidos. Si llegaron y se le expiró su visa, si entraron ilegal, le pagaron a alguien que lo entraron, obviamente no queremos que las personas hagan eso, que rompan la ley, pero cuando lo hacen por pura necesidad y para sobrevivir en esta vida, entendemos que estas cosas pasan, no solamente es hispanos, por mucha gente entran aquí, todo el mundo asuma que son hispanos, este, es necesario de entender el proceso, que cuando están aquí, si alguien está violando sus derechos civiles, humanos, si alguien le está causando peligro, si le están metiendo cantazo y robándole su dinero, que pocos monedas que se ganan, este, ustedes deben de reportar, Deben de hablar con la policía, la policía no es del enemigo, la policía no tiene derecho de exportar a nadie, solamente el proceso con lo, el, los Estados Unidos Federal pueden hacer eso. Y hay muchas cosas que los centros hispanos y organizaciones tienen información. So no tengan miedo, no vivan en, en ese clamor right. de miedo. Tienen que conseguir información y para eso estamos aquí nosotros. And just to summarize it in English, um, Regardless of, of how people got into this country, whether they got in here legally and their visas expired or as an overstay, or they came in through the usual systems, they pay someone a coyote as they call them, they came in here. And it's not just Hispanics that are here illegally. There are people who are here um, and have overstayed or came in through other processes because the nature of life and survival brought them into that. We don't condone breaking the law. It's actually more dangerous for you to be here um, without your um, your papers and without, you know, without being here right. in that state because you tend to be more of a victim. And as we try to say, there's rights. You have rights. You have human rights. You have civil rights. Now, you don't have the right to federal entitlements, as most people think, mm -hmm. that they're here. Um, taking from our system. If anything, the wages that they make, the taxes that they pay, they pay into Social Security. Imagine what the Social Security fund would look like mm -hmm. and the Medicare fund if the wages that are taken out of these folks' paychecks were not there and they're not claiming taxes. But most recently I had someone call me wanting to uh, file their taxes and wanting to learn the process. So I didn't know the answer. I referred them to an immigration lawyer. So when Nancy and I you know, work among the community, not that we are necessarily experts in that field, but we know a little bit about a lot of things and are able to direct people to the resources. Mm -hmm. And that's really what a community leader does. We may not be able to solve all the problems, but we help you find the resources. And that's something that elected leaders do too. We try to direct you to the agencies that specialize in certain fields and depending on what you need. Obviously, if it's something within government, something within, in my case, the city, but I, ha I know people in the state mm -hmm. and I know people in the county, that you get them to the right persons, that we share those resources. Because one of the big problems I see in our community is the lack of communication, the lack of knowing where to go to to get this information. We've done a better job, and, and there's helplines in Spanish, there's bilingual programs, there's um, government's done a much better job to outreach into the Latin community, but we need to do a little bit more. How receptive is the, you know, the new um, leaders in the city, council, and also, I guess, you know, I don't know if you can speak for, for, for the new administration, but because a few years ago, I know that there was a big uh, uh, pursuit, if I could use that word, 
of the illegal individual, especially in the Ellesmere area of Newport. I don't know if you guys remember that. I remember. Yeah. So um, what is the atmosphere now uh, uh, from your stand? How do you sense that this new uh, initiative from, from uh, uh, President Obama and also now that I sense that the Republicans are coming to, 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 to the uh, table and it will affect you know, the immigration reform. Nothing like losing seats in the House mm -hmm. will get them to face the reality that the, the population of the United States have changed. Um, more young people have gotten involved mm. in the voting process, which is something we did not see before. I think that President Obama has inspired that when children that are eight and nine years old are running around talking about the president, which I don't recall doing when I was that age or other children throughout any other election. Mm. I think that this, uh, this president has inspired. He's inspired a lot of debate. He's inspired a lot of things, uh, positive and negative, but he has inspired. That's one thing for people to get involved in the process, and I'm happy about that part. Now, in terms of the new administrations that we have, well, the, the administration of Governor Markell continues. And in speaking to Governor Markell throughout um, his election the first time when he ran in the primary, I knew that he was very sensitive to the subject, mm. that he saw and understood that the system was broken. There's things that we needed to fix. We did sit down as a business community and, and spoke to him about some of the issues, the things that are going on, and he assigned someone in his office specifically to help and to work with these issues. Now, how much further we've gotten in the process, I can't tell you this right now, but I know that the first step is making sure that you have a leader that at least is open to dialogue and to the discussion. Second, I can tell you that our county executive is adamant about working with the Hispanic community, Mr. Tom Gordon, and in issues of housing is a perfect example, like he said, when he, um, you know, he did not win his reelection after his first two terms, one of the issues that he was planning to tackle was the housing issue. Mm -hmm. The way that Hispanics are treating in housing, where they pay the same amount of rent, they're not getting the same services, they're living in deplorable conditions, but people don't complain. They forget that they have rights. Um, as far as the city, um, the city has never been aggressive, any of the mayors, you know, in terms of we well, can't do this and we can't do that and people are illegal. I think that every uh, mayor that we've had in the administration has also been receptive to the fact that this is a federal issue and that if crimes are being committed against people in our city, it doesn't matter whether you're documented or undocumented, they're, the police are going to handle them, they're going to take care of them, there's going to be cultural sensitivity. Um, mm -hmm. And I, what I have seen, especially with the new administration with Williams, there's more women in positions as directors, um, there's more uh, cultural sensitivity to mm -hmm. make sure that the city leadership reflects the community. Mm -hmm. We have our highest ranking police officer in the state of Delaware, who is now Inspector Victor Ayala, who has been with the right. force for many years, a uh, great community leader and an awesome musician. Um, he's a good friend, proud to call him my friend. We have a, a female chief of police. And I've always said that women are gonna look at issues very differently. We have a Hispanic caucus. Right. We have two Hispanics in city council. So you know that we're going to be looking out uh, for those issues. So I believe that our Delaware government has been far more receptive. Now there is little pockets and areas um, Sussex County, there may be some issues down there, but even those mayors have come to the table and have met with the community. But again, there's little towns, they have their leadership, their mayors, and they're very opposed to what they see going on around them. But the bottom line is that if you don't have uh, Latinos working in those poultry farms, mm -hmm. or people that come in that are new into the, to the system, they have done this before, tried and failed. People have gone in there, They've, th the jobs are there, and folks don't want them. So when you talk about people being unemployed, there's plenty of jobs in Sussex County at the poultry farms. It's the dirtiest job available and no one wants it. Who's doing that job? The Latinos mm. are doing that job. And that's what people need to understand, that there is a service being filled. If you want the jobs, they're there. There, there's a reason. There's a reason why these folks are here, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. Yeah, and that's and that's uh, my next question was going to be how the um, immigration reform uh, impact uh, the businesses of the employer employers, and I think you already you already uh, uh, touched on that. But if you want to elaborate, um, on the well, this is something I said on the radio most recently. Is what people need to understand is how did we get to this point? We got to this point because as America has built, mm. I hate to say this, they've done it on the backs of quite a few people. 
Um, you know, they came into this country, we had the issue with the Native Americans and their land. Um, the Mexicans were part of those, of the, of the indigenous tribes that mm -hmm. lived here. Uh, when you look at areas like California, New Mexico, uh, obviously Mexico, and other states, this was all part of Mexico. So when you come in and you settle on someone's land and you call it your own, and then now all of a sudden these people are in your country that we forget that we took because it was their country, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden they're illegal and we want you to leave. No, mm -hmm. why don't you leave? You mm -hmm. took their <laughs> land, you know? This is what I, I mean. People need to understand history, but that's part of the big But I mean, you know, I don't understand history. But I do want to say this. Uh, the word American, people always, when they say the word American, they, 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 they think of somebody who's Caucasian. And so, and that's, uh, you know, mm -hmm. I have, I love Caucasians, you know, I love every, everyone, but um, even Latinos tend to do that. Americans are Caucasians. That's the image. You're, if you're American, mm -hmm. you're white. And so there's a lot of mindset that we have to change as to the definition of what an American is. And I like what you had to say, Maria, about uh, the fact that we did take we did take from the Mexicans and when the war was over, we, we pushed the, the borders. Americans. We pushed, mm -hmm. the, so I mean, but that has happened in many countries, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, all over the world. But in this country, Americans are Native Americans. Everybody else, we're the, uh, the foreigners. We're the, we're the visitors. We're the ones who the immigrants because it's, it was initially, you know, land that belonged to the Native Americans. So we have to first change what is the definition of an American? What's the definition of a citizen? That's a different story. A citizen is someone who is legally documented or was born in, in, in the United States or states be, or countries belonging to the United States, like Puerto Rico. But um, the, the mindset of that has to change first. Now, you mentioned cultural sensitivity. That's fine in, 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 in government, but then there's cultural competency. What can, you know, what should the, not only do I know uh, that what, what a, a person from another country does and their customs, but how am I going to react? What actions am I going to take in dealing with someone else's way of being? So that those two things have to uh, play. And I think everyone in government should be, should take cultural sensitivity and cultural competency because we have so many different kinds of customs and traditions. And once we know those things, then we know how to communicate better. Okay. I, well, I'd like to say that I think that the next generation of people are going to be much better about this because mm -hmm. one of the things that I see in my son's school is that they're teaching him. He's in a, he's in a school in Harlan Elementary where they're teaching uh, the International Baccalaureate Program mm -hmm. where they're looking at the global, the global impact, how each individual affects the world globally. And they started with earth and nature and the land and the trees and the plants. And now he just turned in a project that was a timeline on his life. And the next project will be in this unit, how he now interacts with the rest of the world. And as children start learning about other cultures, they're so much more embracing and welcoming than adults are. And the prejudices that we see is because it's learned from the family, from the ignorance, from the media. And these are the things that have to change. But getting back to the point that I was making, yes, we have to learn the history. Second, the other wave of the history that we have to understand, and something just happened very close to home that will put this into perspective. As America was growing, um, we know that we went through the stages of slavery to, to build the land. Then, as America kept growing, we knew that the border countries and the border states needed labor. So they brought in people from different countries, from South and Central America, and mainly Mexico because it's a border town. So these people were brought in to work. There weren't issues of legalization and documentation back then. These companies and factories grew because of these folks. They're here, they settled, they bought homes, they have families. Now all of a sudden, yes, we did have a terrible thing happen with 9-11. We realized that we need to know who's in our country because there are some bad people in our country. But now everybody's paying for it. But when you welcome them and you brought them here for a reason, Mm. and now all of a sudden you want them gone when you turn around and you see that they're driving nice cars and they have homes and that their stores are populating our community because they're hard-working business owners and entrepreneurs all of a sudden a flag went up now we can you know in the next segment talk a little bit deeper about this but most recently 
On Delaware Online and in the News Journal, there was a story about Bloom Energy, who's coming to Wilmington, to Newark, Delaware, mm. to take over the Chrysler plant. They're going to bring 900 jobs. We're very thankful for that happening. However, right here in this day and time, they just got fined by the Federal Labor Department for bringing in 14 Mexicans, paying them at the rate of $2.66, wow. translate the equivalent in Mexican pesos, to fix their broken generators. So they were violating the labor laws. Now that's here and now in the present that just happened. Imagine hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people that were brought in to work with other companies who also donate to hundreds and hundreds of senators and congressmen. <laughs> so as I told people on Thursday, don't get it twisted. They were welcomed into this country. All of a sudden they're unwelcome and you just want to throw them out and not realize that there's a problem with the system and there has to be a path to citizenship. Well, we'll talk uh, further uh, about that. Uh, I wish we had an hour, two hour programming. So we almost coming to an end. We got like an, a minute and a half. Um, and my last question to you would be, how can we get, because you, you, you summarize, you know, how uh, positive the new administrations are, you know, talking from the uh, um, um, governor to the, to the city. And now, uh, when, when we come in about our community leaders, especially faith-based, what would you like to see from us, you know, uh, uh, supporting some of this initiative? And we have less than a minute. You know, Mike, I really do believe that the faith-based community is where we as business leaders, community leaders, and elected leaders, we have to work with the churches because the churches are out there already doing the ministry mm -hmm. and reaching people. So we have to make sure that you have the access and the information that you share that because the people that tend attend church tend to be more responsible community mm -hmm. people and then they can get the word out in their community to the folks that may not go to church and I think it's very key that we work together in partnership well, I do I do want to yeah. add quickly is as Latinos and as as African Americans we have to also understand and 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 you know educate ourselves as to what we did to contribute to the making of this country and be proud of that you know what I mean and that will help us to to thrive better and to um, to work together and communicate better. Okay. Well, we're going to wrap this up here, but you can follow us uh, next Saturday or the following Saturday uh, through a radio program because we have more time on the radio to discuss this issue because I think it's important not only to us but to you. And what we're trying to do here is not polarizing but to enlighten mm -hmm. and, and, and educate so you guys know or everybody know what we need to do in order to fix this. I want to thank Nancy Lopez for being here. I want to thank Councilwoman Maria, and um, I'll see you next time. Ministerio Radial Impacto, junto a Malaquías Reyes, presentaron Impacto Cristiano. Agradecemos por su sintonía y les invitamos para que el próximo sábado nos acompañen en una edición más. Si tiene comentarios, sugerencias, peticiones o testimonios, escríbanos al PO Box 30024 Wilmington, Delaware 19805 o al correo electrónico mreyes 6304 arroba aol punto com. Y no olvide nuestra línea telefónica 302 377 0403 302 377 0403 hasta una próxima edición